Shalom and welcome once again to Treasures of the Torah. I'm Moray Matan, Pastor Matt McEwen, and this week we have a double portion in our Torah study of Matot and Maseh. As we look in our commentary series for this Torah cycle, Wellspring of Torah, we have a comment from Rashi and also one that comes down from Noam Elimelech. And so let's look at this right now. We are looking at verse 2 of chapter 30 of this double portion, and let's see what it says. Moshe spoke to the heads of the tribes of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing that Hashem has commanded. Here's the first comment that we get from Rashi. All the other prophets prophesied with, Thus says God. Moshe, however, had an additional superiority in that he also prophesied with the expression, this is the actual word that Hashem has spoken. Now, here is this comment that comes from Noam Elimelech. There are righteous people of whom we may believe that their words are uttered in accordance with God's will, that God has spoken thus, i.e., as they said it. There are others where there is no need to believe. Once one hears their words, one can instinctively feel that this is the actual word that God has spoken, that the words they utter are truly divine. This is the difference between the other prophets' utterances and those of Moshe. In the case of other prophets in our history, there was cause to believe that their words could be justly prefaced with, thus says God, that they had spoken in accordance with God's will. But in Moshe's case, the divine presence actually spoke from out of his throat. All who heard that voice knew that this could be the word of none other than God himself. This is so important for us to learn as we study the way things are done in Judaism. As far as the house of Israel goes, we, we can't just say something if we are giving... Um, let's say, some evidence for a certain point of view that we have, we must cite the rabbi, the school of thought that this comes from, the teacher, and sometimes there's even a chain of teachers. So-and-so said this in the name of so-and-so. And this is how we know that there is this authoritative nature as to what they said because of this chain of, of passed-down information. That's where we get this word masora or masoret, this idea of something that is passed down. We must remember that even in the Brit Chadashah, that there were years and years of oral passing down, of oral transmission, before anything was written down. This is a very important thing in Judaism, the idea of student getting their information from their teacher, and then that student gives it to students of theirs. There's this wonderful tradition in Judaism with regard to the, the passing down of information and of authoritative teaching. And it's no different here than, than with Moses. Now, obviously, we call Moses Moshe Rabbeinu, our rabbi. He is uh, such an authority. And we know that we can trust what he says because he spoke to Hashem as a man speaks with his friend face to face. This is so important, panim el panim, face to face. And this is why we can trust the words of Moses. You know, it's interesting when we speak of authority, this is exactly what the people said in surprise and in amazement about the teachings of Yeshua himself. He speaks not as our teachers and scribes, but as one with authority. This is so important. Now, when we look into writings like the letter written to the Messianic Jews, the book of Hebrews in the Brit Chadashah in the New Testament, we see that it is important for us to, to lay out the fact that Moses is a paramount authority. He is at the top of the mountain, but even higher than him sits our Messiah, our chief rabbi, Rabbi Yeshua of Nazareth. And so we must be very clear, when we listen to teaching, we have to make sure that it is coming from a kosher place. It's not just that someone is pulling something out of the air with no authority to back it up. When Moses spoke, it is, as this teacher says, as if what came out of Moses' throat was the actual voice of the divine presence. It wasn't just, thus says the Lord, it's that the Lord told me directly, and I am telling you. 
What a wonderful, wonderful way to look at that. And if you remember in Pirkei Avot, when it talks about the unbroken transmission of uh, going from Moses to Joshua and then down the line to the men of the great assembly and so on and so forth, it starts with Moses because we get it uh, from Moses from God himself. This is such an amazing teaching. I pray that it's been a blessing to you. Make sure that when you're teaching others that you're citing kosher sources. If you'd like to study with me and at the school where I study, you can fill out an application at shuvu.tv and learn with us there. I'm praying God's richest blessings upon you this week. Shabbat Shalom.